<laughs> Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking once again about polynomials. Really, the last time we chatted, we we only had a chance to talk about naming polynomials. Am I right? But uh, let's consider adding and subtracting polynomials. Let's just jump right into that. Add, subtract, polynomials. Pretty much what we're going to do is, uh, that's a terrible arrow, bam, there we go, uh, is just combine like terms. Like terms, am I right? Bam, there we go. So what do I mean by like terms? Well, let me tell you, friend. Like terms, uh, let's see, have the same variables. or variable, I suppose, so variable parentheses s, right? And same exponents. Okay, so in order to combine like terms, all we're going to do is add or subtract the appropriate coefficients, right, meaning the number in front of the variables, uh, and the exponents remain unchanged, key. All right, key right there, right? Because uh, if you remember, well, let's uh, let's actually just start with something we used to. Uh, 3x plus 2x, right? If I'm adding these, are these like terms? How do I know? Do they have the same variables? Yes, because those are both x's. All right, do they have the same exponents? Yes, those are both little invisible ones. So if one of these was an x squared, that would be a no-go. Those are no longer like terms. And because they are like terms, I can add them up, all right? So 3x plus 2x, all I'm going to do is add the coefficients. So 3 plus 2 is 5x, right? So the variable stayed the same and the exponent remained the same, right? So there would be my answer. So let's do like one more tricky one. Uh, so let's say I have uh, 3x squared y minus 2xy squared plus, uh, let's do 5x squared y uh, plus y cubed. Bam. So here's a crazy polynomial made of a bunch of junk. Uh, do you guys see any like terms? 3x squared y and 5x squared y. Now, even though this uh, middle term here, well, I guess it's not middle, it's in the middle of these guys, though, uh, has the same variables, x and y, the exponents are not matching to these guys. Urgh, I see. Um, so, those aren't quite like terms. In fact, they're I don't know, unlike terms, I guess. Sure, we'll call them that. Uh, so let's figure out 3x squared y plus 5x squared y. What am I going to do with the exponents? Leave them. Leave them. Oh, man, you trick question there. I thought I was going to stump someone for sure. But what do I do with the 3 and the 5? Add them, right? So 3 plus 5 is ocho x squared y's, right? 3 blueberries plus 5 blueberries is 8 blueberries, right? So the you know, these things remain the same. They didn't suddenly change what they were. Uh, and then I'll have minus 2xy squared. He had no friends. And uh, plus y cubed. So uh, typically what you do when you have multiple variables kind of being represented, um, you'll end up uh, writing your terms from uh, highest exponent and alphabetic order. So kind of like I prioritized the x's first and then the y's ended up showing up a little bit like that. So that's kind of how you deal with uh, adding and subtracting polynomials. Uh, if you're subtracting um, multiple terms with parentheses on the, you know, around them, just make sure you distribute that minus sign, and you'll be awesome. You guys, you guys are great. So let's see, for multiplying polynomials, here's my general rule of thumb. You will multiply the coefficients right and if the variables match 
what do I do with those exponents when I multiply two things at the same base? Multiplying two things at the same base, I do what to the exponents? Add the exponents. Right. So we already know how to multiply um, monomials. We did that kind of recently, right? Their properties of exponents and such. Uh, let's talk about something like this. What if I've got 2x squared times uh, 3x to the fourth minus 5x, I suppose, squared minus 3. How about, bam, there we go. So here I'm multiplying. This is a, let's see if I can classify this. The degree is 2. Do you know what the name is based on the degree for that? It's a quadratic. And there's a single term here, so that is a monomial. So quadratic monomial. And I'm multiplying it by a, let's see, this degree, is, highest degree is 4. So that's a quartic. And there are 1, 2, 3 terms. So that is a trinomial. So quadratic monomial multiplied by a quartic trinomial. Kind of wordy there. But uh, essentially what I'm going to do is the distributive property here. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. Right? So I'll go whoop, whoop, whoop. Right like that. And just distribute that guy to all of those. And let's see. When I multiply, I'm going to multiply the coefficient. So 2 times 3 is 6. And I add the exponents. x squared times x to the fourth is x to the sixth, right? 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. x squared times x squared, is that going to be? x to the fourth, add those exponents. Uh, 2 x squared times negative 3, negative 6. And then x squared, just look, x squared, I guess, right? Got no x exponents in order to combine them with. So, uh, And then I'm done. It looks like I don't have any simplifying to do. Right like that. Right, so, no es más mal, es el más bien del mundo, no? How about this? Here's a classic problem. Oh, man, I'm always, oh, there's a little Waldo hiding right there. But bam, bam, right, bingo. Uh, what if I'm multiplying 2x minus 1 times, uh, man, I'm always using the same numbers. Let's do 8x plus 7. There we go. Those are some numbers I don't use as often. So here I've got a linear, because of the degrees, one, binomial, because there's two terms, multiplied by a linear binomial. Thoughts on how to multiply this? Um, Anybody? You have to do maybe divide it by two, whatever. It turns out what we'll do is double distribution. So this 2x is going to be multiplied by both of these guys. All right. So let's see. Uh, 2x times 8x is 16x squared. And 2x times 7 is 14x. Okay. So I distributed the 2. And now I'm going to distribute this entire negative 1. Right. Oh, oh, oh. So I'm going to distribute that. You could do it up top if you'd like. Or you could put your arrows down underneath. It doesn't matter. Uh, so negative 1 times 8x is negative 8x. I like it. And negative 1 times 7? Negative 7. You like that purple color? Oh, just you wait. We're eventually going to be in the purple zone. And then it'll be showing up all the time. So uh, now... I've got to go through and try to combine like terms, if possible. Does 16x squared have any friends? No. No. That's too bad. That's mean. Eh. Does 14x have any friends? Yeah. Yeah. Who's it? Yeah, that 8x. Bam, they're friends. They're like terms. They get the same variable. They got the same exponent. They're going to hang out all the time. So 14x and negative 8x, how do I combine those? I... Subtract, in this case, the coefficients. 14 minus 8 is positive 6. And what do I do with the exponents? Keep them, right? 
14 horses minus 8 horses is still 6 horses. It's not going to suddenly be like, I don't know. Yeah, dragon. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if you square a horse, apparently it becomes a dragon. I don't know. Uh, and does negative 7 have any friends? Good. Keep it that way. Don't hang out with negative 7. He's a bad influence on you. He's going to learn to turn his life around first, maybe. I don't know. Just be a good influence on him from a distance. Maybe. Maybe. Unless you're so positive that you're going to help him turn his life around. Wow, that's, that's a wonderful story. <laughs> now, um, I'm semi-reluctant to show this to you, but the other way that you might have approached this problem back in the day, and the reason um, I'm careful showing this to you is because it only applies in super specific situations when you have a binomial times a binomial. Okay, this is the only situation this works in. Double distribution works a lot, like all the time, or triple distribution and stuff, and all sorts of stuff. But you might remember this guy, foil. Anybody? First, outer, inner, last. So let's uh, contrast this approach to the foil method. First, outer, inner, last is what that stands for. So let's see, for the first, that means I'm multiplying the first elements from each set, or you know, each binomial. 2x times 8x is 16x, right? You have to write this down. Huh. No, if you never want to know FOIL, that's fine with me, I'd be happy. Would you square that? Nope. Oh, thank you. Oh, my apologies, Joey. My apologies. I was like, no, nope. and then I was like, oh, he's right. I'm the one that's wrong. You got my back. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see, so the O is for outer, so the outermost, right? 2x is furthest this way, 7 is furthest that way. So multiply those, 2x times 7 is 14x, and it's positive. I is for the innermost, so those are the innies right there. Negative 1 and 8 is negative 8x, right? So this, yeah. And L is for lasts, negative 1 and 7 is negative 7. And uh, notice any similarities between double distributing? Yeah, they're, they're kind of the same a little bit. Uh, good job there, team. And so, and then when I combine them, I still end up with the same thing. Now, FOIL, I actually um, just want to point out that the order that you FOIL doesn't matter. Technically, as long as you pair this guy up with everyone in the other one, and you pair this guy up with everyone in the other one, uh, you'll eventually get the right answer. So we could have even done uh, OLIF method if we wanted. Uh, we could have done OILF. I like that one. Uh, we could have done uh, Philo. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, I don't know. Li Li Lifo. I don't know. But you could have kind of done it in any order, it wouldn't have mattered. But I'm not a fan of FOIL because what are its limitations? Yeah, Only... Binomial times a binomial. Wow, someone was listening. Or maybe you just rewound the video on your phone because I'm live streaming. No, never mind, you can't even do that. I get, okay, you got me. You were listening. I'm on to you. Only works when multiplying... Binomial by a binomial. Whenever I write binomial, I always think of bone meal that you find in Skyrim. It's like, what good is that? You can't even do that much alchemy with it. This stuff's terrible. Uh, and it's like disgusting. Like, it makes me think of oatmeal, but it's bones. And then it sounds like chalky and gross, like those little hearts you'd get on Valentine's Day. Like, ew. But anyways, binomial times a binomial. So what about, what about something fancier that foil couldn't handle? What if I did this guy? What if I have negative 5x cubed minus 2x uh, squared plus 1? multiplied by, here we go, about x squared minus 9. Bam. All right. 
So what am I multiplying here? I've got a third degree. Do you guys remember what a third degree was called? A cubic by degree, and then three terms would be the trinomial. And this is a quadratic binomial. So I can't FOIL here because I do like the first, and then the outer, and then the inner, and then the last, but I would have entirely forgotten this little negative 2x squared, dude. So, so what instead we could do is we could triple distribute, where I'll send this guy to both of those, I'll send the, the 2x squared to both of those, and then I'll send the, uh, oh, oh, I need a better color here. And then I'd send the one to both of those. So triple distribution. Actually, even crazier, you could actually distribute backwards no. from right to left. Yeah, yeah. So you could have distributed x squared to all three of these guys and then negative nine to all three of those guys. Or if you really wanted, you could have actually moved this guy over here and then double distributed it into the trinomial. All sorts of options, but let's just triple distribute just to show you that it can happen. Negative 5x cubed times x squared is negative 5x to the fifth because I'm adding the exponents, right, right? Right, right. Uh, and let's see, negative 5x cubed times negative 9 will be positive 45x cubed. Okay, keep going. Here we go. Then I had the purple. Uh, negative 2x squared times x squared is negative 2 what? x to the fourth, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Negative two x squared times negative nine. Negative times a negative, that's a positive, friend. It's a positive. And let's see, let's throw in the green one here. One times x squared, that's a positive x squared. And one times negative nine is minus nine. Okay, so let's see if we can write an answer out here. Uh, does x to the fifth have any friends? No. Does x cubed have any friend? Oh, wait, oh, time out. Let's write this from highest exponent to lowest. It looks like I've got a 4 here showing up before the 3. Does x to the 4th have any friends? No. 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 So I'm going to write that one next. Does x to the 3rd have any friends? No. Does x squared have any friends? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Friendship is magic. Here we go. So I've got 18x uh, squared plus... Is this a 0x squared? Oh, there's an invisible 1. What? 19x squared. And then negative 9, no friends. Bam, because there's no other constants. And this would be my answer. By the way, uh, if you wanted to read this one, we don't have a short name for x to the 5th. So that would just be a 5th degree. And we also don't have a name for 4 or more terms. So this would just be a fifth degree polynomial is how I would refer to that one, friend. So, so that's some basic addition and multiplication, but let me consider with you some special cases of multiplication. Let's see, what if I had this? What if I have uh, 3x squared minus... Uh, I don't know. Man, I'm always hitting threes and fives. That's fine. But what if I wrote this? And I wanted to expand this out. What are your thoughts? Oh, no! We can't do that. I was, I was waiting to see. Super illegal to do this. Why? Because we can't, we can't distribute over subtraction. Look at this is like a guy and he's crying tears. These are tears that he's crying because he's like <laughs> he's so sad. It's like you can't subtract distribute over subtraction. Oh, that's so sad. So, well, what does it mean to square something? No. So close. What does it mean to square something? Multiply it by itself. Multiply it by itself. So 3x squared minus 5x multiplied by 3x squared minus 5x. Well done. So now I've got a quadratic binomial times a quadratic binomial. So let's uh, multiply it out.
Let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, x squared times x squared, x to the 4th. And let's see, 3 times negative 5, negative 15, x squared times x is x to the 3rd. And then, let's see, next guy, negative 5x times that, negative 15x to the 3rd. And the negative 5x times the negative 5x is plus, plus, hmm, uh, positive 25x squared. Now, realize you guys are still writing down. Give you a moment to catch up. So, what I would like to point out is that, notice the middle two terms are the same. Hmm. Peculiar. So I can actually combine those, but notice even like their coefficients match. I'm going to show you a pattern for this particular type of problem in a moment. Uh, so I have 9x to the fourth minus two of those, or minus 30x cubed, right? Uh, that, where, there's the rest of my three. I guess that's an ugly three. Bam. Uh, plus 25x squared. Now, this is actually a very special case going on here. Um, turns out there's a pattern for stuff like this. This is called the uh, square of a binomial pattern. Square of a binomial. So, what's a binomial? whenever I have two terms being added or subtracted, right? And if I'm squaring a binomial, that means I'm squaring that entire thing. And according to the square of a binomial pattern, which I'm sure you've seen before, but your memory and recollection of it may be limited, uh, this would equal a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Oh, oop, oh, man, my mouse was going crazy. Oh, man, what's going on? I'm getting, like, all sorts of flashes here. I'm scared, guys. Oh, oop. This is really crazy. Hmm. Eh. I'm going to unplug this. Like, this light was going, like, all flickering. Wow. All right, okay, here we go. Now I can make a box. All right, so you do have to have this memorized. What? Sounds like fun. Uh, and actually, watch this. Instead of making you memorize two formulas, I'm going to cut two down to one. Ready? Watch this. See this little uh, plus sign in the middle here? If this is negative, there's only one thing different. Right here. Bam. Now it's two formulas you got memorized. You guys are so smart. Wait, when do you have to have this uh, forever and right away. Sweet. Uh, well, by the time we have a quiz anyway, but you should uh, work on memorizing some of these patterns tonight, if possible. Uh, it'll be good. And actually, eventually, we'll also be using these patterns in reverse. If you're curious, uh, this right-hand side actually has a name as well. This guy is called a perfect square trinomial. Trinomial. Bam. Now, let me show you how you could use this pattern. All right, so for this previous example, you might have been like, hey, wait a minute, that looks like one of them damn patterns I heard about. And I'd be like, yeah, you're right, that is a pattern. And you'd say, that's like the square of a binomial pattern, and I'd say, that is also correct. And then I would say, okay, if you're going to use this pattern, what part in this appears to be the A? So I would say, okay, so a is equal to 3x squared. And what part in this appears to be the b? 5x. And I like how you guys said 5x. I'm actually going to use the positive version of 5x, but because this is the minus sign, I'm going to use the negative version of the formula. Technically, you can use the green version if you define b as being negative, but you'll actually save yourself some trouble if you don't. So that's even better. So according to this, so there's my A, there's my B. 
I can now just plug in for a and b. So that means I'm going to have a squared is the same as 3x squared, all squared, right? So notice here I've just replaced the a with a, right? Mm -hmm. Minus 2 times ab. So that'll be 3x squared uh, times 5x. Now you might be wondering, like, is this really going to save us time? It will later on. It's helpful. Uh, and then plus b squared, and b is 5x, so 5x all squared, right? And now let's uh, simplify this. So I'm squaring both the 3 and the x squared. Uh, so I'll have 9x to the 4th. Here I've got, let's see, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, times 5 is negative 30. And let's see, x squared times x is... X to the third, we're looking good. And square the 5 and the x, 5 squared is 25. And x squared. All right, so that's how you would go about using one of these Demdir uh, patterns. All right, square of a binomial pattern. It's good stuff. So, um, so that's kind of your alternate approach instead of using double distribution. However, I want to point out that the square of a binomial pattern only can be applied when you're squaring a binomial. Okay, good, good. A uh, couple more patterns I want to show you, but I don't think I'll take the time necessarily to derive or show them all to you, uh, well, or have us do problems with each of them. But uh, a couple other patterns. There's the sum and difference pattern. Sum and Difference pattern. And this is a nice pattern. It also happens to relate to binomials. A plus B times A minus B. So it's like I was almost squaring it, except the middle signs were off. Ugh, so close. So close. Uh, and actually, there's some special names for these guys compared to each other. These aren't quite opposites of each of each other. If they were opposite, the A would have had to be negative as well. These are actually referred to as conjugates. All right, which I think is also an English word, right? They use that. What are conjugates in the English language? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Forget what you know about English. Learn math right now instead. That'll, that'll help you out. It'll be better. Um, so a plus b times a minus b. Now my first term, think about this, would be the a times the a, a times the a, giving me an a squared. My last term will come from the b times the negative b, giving me a negative b squared. But think about the, the middle two terms. I'd have uh, a times negative b and b times a. a times negative b is the same as negative a b b times a is the same as positive ab. What's going to happen when I combine those together? What happens to those? Yeah, those are just like, ching, ching. those just cancel out. So it turns out the pattern is just going to be a squared minus b squared. All right. And this, if you approached it from this side, if you ever see that side of it. You can actually use the pattern in reverse, which we'll talk about later. Uh, this is referred to as the difference of squares pattern. Because remember, difference means subtract, technically with priority. And what am I subtracting? I'm subtracting two perfect squares. Squares. Right? So, so that's another pattern you might come across tonight. Uh, so that could occur anytime you have um, almost identical binomials, except their middle signs are off. Let's see, I'm going to give you one more pattern, but like I said, I'm not going to do an example with it, just for sake of tiempo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's do um, the cube of a binomial. Cube of a binomial. This one uh, is a little bit rarer. but it'll still show up later on in this course. Let's see, so if I have a plus, 
Oh, you know what I forgot on the last one? No, never mind, I didn't. I didn't forget nothing, because I'm that good. So let's see, A plus B all cubed. This one's a good one. I like this pattern. First term is going to be A cubed. Well, first of all, actually, what does A plus B all cubed mean? Nope. Times. Yeah. A plus B times A plus B times A plus B. Right? I'm multiplying it by itself three times. One, two, three. All right? So when I do all that out, instead of having to, like, distribute once, getting an answer, and then distributing A plus B into that answer, that'd be a lot of work, by the way. I'll tell you that much. Uh, instead, we're going to use a nice little pattern. Uh, the pattern is the first term will be a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. This is a nice pattern right here. I'll tell you that much. Right, and I'm cubing a binomial. So cube of a binomial pattern. Uh, one of the things I want to point out, let's just analyze this pattern real quick. Take, take a look at the a cubed, right, the a's. So for the exponents for the a's, it goes from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. All right, you see that for the a's going on there? Check out what happens for the b's. It goes from, oh, I just lost my top bar. b to the 0, b to the 1st, b to the 2nd, b to the 3rd. It's a nice little pattern right there. And then the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 1. Uh, I'll teach you all sorts of stuff about patterns about that if you take Math 4, or maybe you'll just be watching some of my Math 4 videos sometime on YouTube, and you'll be like, yeah, yeah, this is awesome, and you'll like click like, 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 and you'll add some comments saying, this is the greatest video ever, is what you'd probably end up doing. Um, more likely, I suppose, that. But... Uh, mm -hmm. So there's some more patterns for you. Lots of stuff I realize we absorbed today, I hope. Um, there's some patterns. Put those patterns in boxes, maybe even on some flashcards uh, so that you can have some of them memorized at some point. So, I'll get that for you in a moment. Well, uh, goodbye, Internet friends. Thanks for watching.